This is Tanner's song, Antisocial. It has 100 million plays. He made it at 14 years old. But the crazy thing is, a few months before that, he was only getting a few thousand plays. So what did he do? Tanner used a ton of creative methods in his come up story that you could repeat too. This ensured he would get this viral. This is the Tanner story. In 2019, Tanner got lucky. He was around 12 years old at the time and his influences in the Chicago rap scene were becoming too inspiring for Tanner. He had to do something. He had to make music. But how? Tanner was f***ing 12. His influences were like 20 years old in massive studios. He couldn't do that. How is he gonna make music? Tanner would start looking things up online. How to record music at home. He found out it was possible. There was a way, but you needed a microphone, interface, and some other little pieces. And all this would allow him to make his own music. He just needed the money now, because that shit was expensive. This is where Tanner would get lucky. Tanner would find a job with his brother, working at a bread factory, where he would move bread out of trucks. Tanner was making 100 bucks every two weeks. This would just be enough to buy an AT2020 and an interface. But he was still short. He still needed to buy a few more things. Luckily, he convinced his mom to buy him the rest. So Tanner now had all the equipment he needed to record. He now needed to find a place to record. This was important because you need an area that drowns all the sound out. So when you record, it sounds as crisp as possible. If you have like a hollow, empty area and you record, it sounds so stupid. I used to record outside my bedroom in this random room we had. The audio was so f you could probably hear me echo about three times. Tanner searched around, but he finally found a little closet in the smallest room in his house. This was going to be perfect, because in a closet, the sound completely drowns out. It sounds so crisp. Probably mad uncomfortable, but you know, fucking anything for the grind. Okay, so Tanner was ready to record. He now just needed to know how to actually record. This was going to be hard, because it was something he's never done in his life. So he went to the place where I've pretty much learned any fucking skill I'm half bloody decent at. YouTube. He would find this YouTuber called Jordan ZXL, who would make videos on how to record on an app called Audacity. Tanner would then use these videos to start creating his own music. These basically taught him everything he needed to know. So ever since then, his career began. Over the next few months, Tanner would really start making music. He would spend most of his time developing his sound to create something that he could release and start blowing up off. He would change from recording on Audacity to FL Studios, which he saw he just sounded way better on. And finally, in May 2020, we would get to the point where Tanner would have his first SoundCloud release. How would this turn out? The song was called Fell In Love. It was damn good. You can really see how hard he worked to create this, because you shouldn't be able to make something this good for only doing music for a few months. It was extremely clean and polished. But there were some issues that would stop it from blowing up. His voice wasn't confident, and it wasn't used exactly right for how high-pitched his voice was at the time. I reckon I could have pulled up 20 songs that sound exactly the same from random on SoundCloud. But overall, a good start. But he was gonna need some work. Three months would pass. Tanner would put in hours upon hours to improve himself as an artist. And finally, in August 2020, Tanner would get his first taste of success. Tanner would drop Made It on SoundCloud. Just take a look at the difference in the sound. See what I mean? He spent time to really become confident and use his voice well. If you're an artist, always look at developing your voice. Very important. Now, the big win here is the song was so good, it would get Tanner his first music video. Produced by Devin on the beat. I mean... Look man, like, I'm sure he tried, but fuck. But what this music video would do, is it would get the attention of one very, very popular mainstream artist at the time, who would change Tanner's life. Lil Tecca 
saw the music video on his suggested page on YouTube. He loved the song. He loved it so much in fact, he would start watching Tanner's movements on social media. He would then DM him and they would end up FaceTiming. These two would have a very important relationship, which we'll get into soon. This goes to show the power of music videos, as it creates a visual way to get an artist's name out there. After this song, Tanner used a method that would alter his career. It would be the point that changed him from getting thousands of streams to millions of streams. This method ultimately began his path into becoming a mainstream artist. In September 2020, Tanner was in online school at the time. He was recording loud. He was doing this ad lib that was so damn loud. So his dad told him to be quiet. So he would record the rest of the song as quietly as he could. This song would become Prada. It is so catchy, bro. The whoa, 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 crazy. Tanner realized how catchy the song was when he finished. And at the time, he was noticing TikTok and how artists like Yeet were becoming mainstream artists through just putting up some catchy snippet from their songs. So Tanner was like, fuck it. This song is pretty catchy. Why not throw it up on TikTok and see what happened? This would be the moment that changed everything. The sound would go viral on TikTok. It would end up having tens of millions of plays. I, I don't think you understand. This song was everywhere. Random hipster blokes at my school in Australia had that sound up on TikTok. This led to the song reaching 1 million plays on SoundCloud. Easily became his biggest. And from that day on, it was never the same. Tanner started to get real attention. All eyes were on him. The next moves he would make were going to be crucial because it was going to decide whether he just dies with Prada and becomes some one hit wonder TikTok rapper or he would actually make a career out of this. So what did he do? Tanner would realize something. He was only 14 years old at the time. There were only a handful of artists that were that young seeing so much success because it usually takes an artist six years to blow up. Usually an artist is in their 20s when they blow up. But Tanner is 14, so he would use this to his full advantage. This became a major marketing point for him. You would see it in his music, it's youthful, it's fun, but you would also see it in his image. In every interview or appearance you would see from Tanner, it was fun, and there was always a lot to do with his age. Tanner would take this a step further. He saw the wave of young artists alongside him. Cash Darmy, who was around 16 at the time, was another artist who was making waves in the underground. Tanner thought it was a great idea to use each other's youthful images to further boost their careers. So in December 2020, they would drop the song 14. This would be insane for their growth. The song as we discussed is about them being young and making music. This song firstly sounds great, but it's a relatable and refreshing topic. It plays really well into their youthful images. Because of this, the song would go crazy viral. It now has 30 million on SoundCloud. This goes to show the power of connecting with like-minded people in music. But this song wasn't done growing. It would take a step further. Cole Bennett would drop a music video for the song. We all know about the Cole Bennett effect and how it helps alight careers like Juice World's. It's nowhere near as potent as it used to be, but it was still a massive boost for Tanner. Tanner would rinse and repeat this strategy. He would connect with his friend Slum Success, who was around 16 at the time. They had a great relationship, but they were about to create a song that was so big, they were about to run the underground. Tanner and Slum Success would drop Antisocial together. The song followed a similar topic to 14. It was about how they deal with the success they achieved at such a young age. Still a topic that hadn't really been covered before. The song was also super aggressive, which we haven't seen Tanner do too much, but he kills it. This song would ultimately become a hit, reaching 100 million plays on Spotify. That's one of the biggest underground songs ever. Tanner wasn't done with this. He would use Antisocial as a platform to bring other young underground artists to all connect and mutually benefit from each other to grow themselves and the sound. So how did he do this? Tanner dropped Antisocial too, two months later, but this time it was different. It had three more artists, Zulo, Young Fazer, 
and SSG Kobe. These were all extremely young artists at the time. The oldest being Kobe, who's still younger than me. He was like 17 at the time, I believe. They would again rap about being young and how they deal with the fame. Great song. Honestly, I would say it was one of the best underground songs of 2021. It would take them all, and especially Tanner, to another level. It hit 30 million players on Spotify. That had done it. Tanner was on top of the underground. There really wasn't any more room for him to grow in the space. So what did he do? Tanner would revisit an old friend who was helping him a ton behind the scenes. Tanner in July 2021 would remix his song Prada, but this time he would bring upon his mainstream friend, Lil Tecca. He'd hop on the song and do well, it's fucking Lil Tecca, you get what you get. This song did much better this time though, having 12 million plays on Spotify. This was a genius tactic from Tanner. He collaborated with an artist who had a bigger fan base than him, but goes a step further. They have similar sounds. So when a Lil Tecca fan hears Tanner for the first time, they're way more likely to listen to him than if they had completely different sounds. This is super important for artists coming up. If there's an artist who's bigger than you, but you both have similar sounds, do what you can to make music with them because you're exposing yourself to a gold mine of new listeners. Lil Tecca would become instrumental to the future of Tanner, helping him make music and perform. Even outside of music, just as an older brother figure to guide him through fame at such a young age, as Tecca's been in his shoes. Eventually, this has led Tanner to being signed to his record label Galactic, which is a sub subs subs it's under UMG. Over the next year and a half, Tanner would continue to drop singles leading up to this album. But in January 2023, Tanner would drop his album Goldtier. So how was this album? Well, really way more experimental than his old stuff. Usually he just has some fun over a plug or rage beat, but on this it's different. He has a collaboration with Lancey Foe. Uh, damn. But uh, highlights are hell yeah, just such a fun song. But as I walk through this path and hope you feel the same, I just beautiful. I'm not even going to play them, mainly because of copyright, but you got to do your own research sometimes. That's all I have. Thank you for the support. I, I love you guys. You guys are amazing. This is so sick. Um, some success vid should be next week. Um, I don't know if things change. Uh, follow my Instagram if things do. I don't know. See ya.